and welcome to the sewing studio. I'm Anna and I'm delighted to be able to demonstrate to you the Brother F420 sewing machine to help you decide if it's the right machine for you. I'm going to talk you through all its features and functions, show you everything that comes in the box, show you how to thread it, do some sewing, show you its capabilities and then talk a bit about warranty and support. Now we've split all of those into chapters, so if there's a particular section you're interested in, feel free just to head on over there. So the Brother F420 sewing machine is part of Brother's mid-range of machines. It's larger than a standard machine, so you've got seven inches of space to the right of the needle. It's got multiple different stitch options on there. There's 140 altogether, and they are listed in the top of the machine here for you. There's 10 different styles of one step buttonhole and five different styles of alf alphabet. <laughs> I nearly couldn't say that then, fonts, alphabet, whichever way you want to say it. And they are all in capital letters. These are all easily selected on this touchpad here and I'll show you how to do that when we get to the sewing section. Now, if all these stitch options isn't enough on this machine, it also comes with my custom stitch, so you could create your own. You have the ability to mirror image some of those stitches, so they stitch out in the opposite direction, and you can change the width and the length. And the maximum stitch width on this machine is seven millimeters, and the maximum length is five millimeters. Now, it's a computerized machine, so you have the option, it comes with a foot pedal, but it also has a start stop button down here to operate the machine. And that means that it also comes with a speed control slider. So you can control your speed when you're sewing to get really nice, precise, precise. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? Results. It also has a reverse button here, a reinforcement stitch, needle up, needle down, and that could be programmed for when you stop sewing, whether you want the needle to stay in or whether you want the needle to come up, your choice, and the automatic scissor cut. It's also got a little manual cutter on the side there as well. The presser foot has an extra high lift that just goes up like that, and you can adjust the pressure that is applied to that presser foot. It also comes with a knee lift, and that plugs in the front of the machine here. The feed dogs are Brother's seven piece system and it has a square feed drive. I won't bore you with the technicalities, but basically it has better control of fabric to give you nice consistent results. And those feed dogs can be dropped as well to do any sort of darning or free motion work. The bobbin simply drops in from the top and you can see when it's running out. Also has the easy set, so there's no need to draw it up, but you can if you want to. It's got one of the easiest needle threaders on the market to help you thread through the eye of the needle. If I pop the accessory tray off, you've then got your free arm here to sew any cuffs or hems. And in the front of here, just pop that back on, in the front of here, there's storage for all the feet and accessories that come with it. And these are all in this handy tray and then there's space for other bits underneath. So, what does it come with? First, you'll find the standard zigzag foot that'll already be on the machine when it arrives, a zip or piping foot, a blind hem foot, one for overcasting, a monogramming foot, one for sewing on buttons, and then your one step buttonhole foot, and a range of accessories, as well as a little pouch to pop them in. And also you have your foot control, power lead that's already plugged into the machine at the moment, and the knee lift. And then you get a quick reference guide, a full operation manual, nearly said manager then, and some grid sheets. And these are what you use when you're using the My Custom Stitch to create your own stitches. And then lastly, it comes with a hard cover. Now this machine weighs nine kilos, so it's not the most transportable in the world, but it is doable. And then this helps to keep it protected while you're out and about, but also to help keep the dust off while it's sat on your desk at home. So let's get seated at the machine. I'll show you how to thread it and we'll go through how it operates and some of its capabilities. This machine is very easy to thread. Just pop the lid up 
and then everything is in number sequence for you. So everything with the dotted line is for your bobbin. Sadly, I don't need to wind one because I've got one here, but it is very simple and there is guides that show you there. And then everything with the solid line is for your needle. So if you take the spool cap off and then pop your thread on and pop the spool cap on the end and you get a different size one of those depending on the size of the reel of cotton that you're using. Get yourself a nice tail of thread and I like to just hold on to it at the top here so you're threading through everything with a bit of tension so you know it's gone in every single piece that it needs to go in. So you go number one down under there, around number two, down number three is around, number four you go back at the right and forward to the left. Now I can feel that's not gone in the take up lever. You can't see it because it's quite hidden on this. But if I drop the needle down and back up again, I can now see that's there for me to thread. So you go back on the right and then come forward to the left and that's now popped in there. And then number five is down here. Number six is in this last guide. And then number seven is this super whizzy needle threader I was talking about. So all you do is lay the thread in that gap and then in between number seven there, there's a little click. You probably can't hear it, but there is a little click. Cut the excess off. And then with this lever here, you're just gonna take it down and up. And don't be too shy with that. So like that. And there's your thread through the eye of the needle. It's as simple as that. So I'm just gonna pop that under the foot. And then the bobbin equally as simple. Just move the slider to the right and the cover will pop up. Now the tail of thread just needs to be to the left. No other way, always to the left. Again, get yourself a bit of a tail, pop your finger on it so you're threading under tension. And then you're following the arrows that are marked here for you. So you're just going under there, around and to here and there's a little cutter there that will cut that off for you pop the cover back on and that's it you're ready to sew you don't need to draw up the bobbin thread as i said but you can if you want to when you first switch the machine on you get this screen here and this is giving you a representation of the stitch you're on so it'll always be in the straight stitch with the needle in the left position which is default for brother you can change it to the center position in the settings if you want to or whilst you're in this folder which is the direct stitch pattern folder it's these numbers here that are just your most commonly used stitches so at the moment i could just press number three and then you can see it goes to the center position for me and then all the other stitches are in separate folders. So you've got the utility symbol here that corresponds with the symbol up here. And these are all the stitches in that section. You've got decorative stitches of which there's three. So you can choose those. And then the fonts in A, and you can choose through those, which I will show you all of those or some of them in a minute. So I'm not going to use the foot pedal, I'm on the start stop button and I'll show you the different speeds. So we'll just sew out the standard straight stitch. So we're on the slowest speed at the moment, so I'm just going to make a start. And then to reverse, just keep your finger on the button for as far back as you want to go. Let go, it will stop and you can carry on. So as you can see, slow is really quite slow, that's quite manageable. And if you were to have the foot pedal plugged in right now, you could put your foot flat to the floor and it's not gonna go any faster than that. You'd need to move this. So midway, and then top speed. Secure those. And the top speed on this machine is 850 stitches per minute. I'm then gonna use my thread cutter. And as you can see, that lifted out the needle and in underneath a little blade shot out and nicked off those threads. So you can just take your work out and that's your nice neat straight stitch. That's the top and underneath. So if we want to switch to a zigzag now, we're still in the direct stitch folder. Sorry, that's the saved folder. 
you can see here in the direct stitch. So zigzag is number five. So I can just press that one and now you can see that we're on the zigzag stitch. So because it's computerized, it will set a default width and length for you. So I'll just secure those. So that's the standard, but obviously you can alter those. So to change the width, it's these here. And to change the length, it's these two here. They correspond just below. So if we go for a slightly wider width and a shorter length, for instance, let's try that. Or you could go in the opposite direction and go for a very narrow width. Not that narrow, that won't give us anything. And then a larger length. Let's just secure those. Cut them off. And I'll show you the different effects that you can get. So this is your standard zigzag. And then this was with it a bit closer together. So that's really good for like applique, um, sewing on patches and things like that. And then this is longer, but with a slightly narrower. So you can, if you go a little bit wider, you could probably get almost like a shell effect on there. Now where we've reversed here at the start and then at the end, when you're doing a zigzag, it can get quite messy because it doesn't go exactly over the top again. So there's a second way that you can secure your stitches. And that's with this reinforcing button. So I'm just gonna pop my work in. Let's go back to a standard zigzag size, just to show you. So all this does when you press it is sew a stitch on the spot. So one, two, three is probably enough and that thread is secure now. So I'll carry on with my stitch. finished and then I want to do one, two, three to secure it again. Cut that off and there you can see it's lovely and neat both ends but still secure and reinforced there and that's the underneath. Now this button has a second function as well and that's with the decorative stitches. So to select through to those you can see these are in these three folders here. So let's stitch out, uh, oh, there's a row of bicycles there. Let's stitch those out number 28. So it's in decorative folder number one. So if we press that, it's asking if it's okay to cancel the current pattern. Yes, and that's just in case you accidentally knock it. It's like a safety feature. But this button here as well will lock out that screen. So if you're changing your foot or doing something else, again, you can press that and it'll lock it out. So yeah, okay to do that. And you can see I'm in the decorative stitch folder one. If you needed to be in number two or number three, you just press that again and you're in number two, number three. But I want number one. And then the stitch I want is stitch number 28. So I'm just gonna type in 28. And you can see I've now got my row of bicycles. So I'm gonna make a start. down a bit. And you could see that time when I pressed this button, instead of just doing one stitch on the spot, the light came on and what that's telling the machine is to carry on and complete that whole stitch that you're doing before you stop. And that's exactly what it did. So you can see you've got finished on a complete bicycle in this instance, it would be any pattern, it would be a, do a complete stitch. And that's really handy when you're nearing the end of your seam or you know the top of a pocket or whatever you're doing, you're not sort of cutting the pattern off halfway through and it looking a bit odd. So the one step buttonhole, let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna get the buttonhole foot out. And these feet just snap on and off. So you're just pushing this lever at the back and that one will drop off. 
And what you want to do is push the back of the button out, button, the buttonhole foot out, and then pop your button in, and that clamps it. And then that determines the size that it's going to stitch your buttonhole for this button, and it'll add a couple of millimetres on top so that it goes in and out the buttonhole nicely. And then you just line up this bar. I'm just going to use the extra lift to get that in underneath. Whoops. I can't do it with that hand. Just do it that way around. <laughs> I was trying to do it so you can see. And you just snap that on and raise it up again. Now, I like to get this thread under the foot. You don't have to. I just think it gives a neater result in the end. Let's just uncurl that from there. And you can do that by dropping the needle into a piece of fabric lifting it up again and then gently pull it through and then you've got it under the foot. You need to bring the buttonhole sensor down which is just behind the needle threader mechanism there and that sits behind that piece of plastic and then when it's sewing it hits and it knows when to stop and come forward again. So the buttonholes are back in the utility folder which is this symbol here. Yes that's fine. And then I'm using cotton, so I'm just going to do a standard buttonhole, which is number 60. And you can see it's telling you to use foot A here, which is the buttonhole foot that we've got on there. So the buttonhole sews in that direction. So you want to put, if you want, a little mark here, which you can line up in this viewing window here, so you know where it's going to sew. Drop the presser foot and off you go. the threads and there's your nice neat buttonhole that's the top and then underneath and just before we move on to some different types of fabrics I'm just going to quickly show you the fonts so I'll take that foot out pop the standard one back in not quite there it goes so we go into the a which is the fonts folder yes that's okay and if you press it once, you get your standard block. If you press it again, you're kind of more gothic, an outline. I can't remember what that one's called. <laughs> and then a foreign one as well, but we'll just do the standard block here. So that's okay. And then up here, you can see in all the folders, these numbers correspond to these letters. So as I said earlier, they're all capitals, and then you've got some numbers, you've got some symbols, and you also have some foreign characters here. And then this is a space for if you were putting two words in, for instance. So I'm just gonna stitch out the word brother, because that's as far as my imagination will go today. So a B is stitch number two. So I just go to number two, and then you can see I've got the letter B there. R is 18. And then I've got BR, and then I just carry on looking at the letters, looking at the numbers, uh, 20, 08, 05, and R is 18 again. So then I've got the word brother. Oh, let's have the monogramming foot. So this is designed for the fonts and the decorative stitches actually because it has a groove in underneath so it helps the density of the stitches just to flow along. So let's snap that one back off. Snap that one on, pop the thread underneath and let's go. And there you have it. Now each letter is secured with a reinforcement stitch. So if you want to snip off these little joining threads, then you can and nothing is gonna unravel. So let's move on to some different type of fabric. So I've got some Jersey 
that we'll have a go with first. So I'm just going to pop that monogramming foot away. So I'm going to pop a jersey needle in. And you just unscrew the clamp and then take the needle out. And this machine takes just standard needles with the flat, the flat back. We keep a brand called Schmetz. Uh, they're a German brand and they're very good quality. They don't tend to be bent straight from the packet and they give really nice results. So the needle threader, again, you just pop the thread up there, under there, cut the excess off and there you go. So let's pop the standard zigzag foot back on. Not quite. There it goes. And pop that under. So this jersey is from an old t-shirt that I've cut up, so that gives you an idea of the amount of stretch that's in here. And I'm going to choose the triple straight stitch. So there are a few triple stretch straight stitch. <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. Um, and there's a few different options on here, different stretch stitches, depending on the type of fabric that you're using, whether it's a woven stretch, a knitted stretch, lycra, things like that. But for this one, I need the triple stretch stitch. So I'm going to go back to the utility folder. Yes, thank you. And then it's stitch number five. So just pop in number five, pop it under the foot and off we go. Just going to secure that at the end. Cut the threads and there you go. That's done a really nice job. There's no waviness in the fabric and you can still stretch the fabric with the stitch. And of course, with the seam. Lastly, let's take a look at the thicker side of fabric. So I've got some denim. So I'm just going to take out the jersey needle because the denim hasn't got any stretch in it. Whoops, let's drop the presser foot, give me a bit more room. And then pop a jeans needle in. And don't underestimate the right needle for the job. There's all types of different ones for different things. Um, and they really do help, A, to keep the machine safe and not do any damage, but also give the best results on your projects. So again, for the needle threader, in there, up there, down up, job done. <laughs> Simple as that. Let's pop the thread underneath. So this is a denim that we keep in the shop. So I'm going to go back to the standard straight stitch. So I'm going to just select it from the direct stitches here. So I need to go back to the direct pattern, choose number one. And because this is thicker than the cotton and the jersey we've been using, I'm going to increase the stitch length just slightly. And that helps to keep the stitches on the top of the work rather, or the fabric rather, rather than it kind of, sometimes you see, uh, if the stitch is too short, it kind of pulls the fabric in like that, which people always think is a tension issue and then start changing the tension when actually all you need to do is change stitch length so that the stitch is not too tight and it's just sitting along the top. So I'll just secure those. And hopefully you've been able to see what great control this has of the fabric. You know, I'm very much just kind of steering from the front. I know I'm only using small pieces, but it is really stable underneath there. And that's your nice, neat straight stitch. So you can see how by lengthening the stitch, it's sitting on top rather than pulling it down in. So this is quite a thin denim. So let's double this over and then it's more like a couple of layers of of a standard denim. I'm not going to change anything else on the machine. No problem at all. Nothing skipped. Nice and neat. And the seam, wherever I can find it, is nice and secure. So let's double it over once more and go through eight layers. And this time I'm going to increase the stitch length again, just slightly for the same reasons as I've been saying. 
And I'm also gonna slacken off the pressure that's on this presser foot. And that's because there's quite a lot of layers here now, it's gonna kind of start to want to, to pucker it up like this, keeping it on the same pressure that it's on. So that's in the settings, which is this button here. And then you can see I'm on page number one of eight. So I'm just gonna scroll through, I think it's page number five from memory. Yep, there you go. And then press a foot pressure. So at the moment it's on three, which is what you would want for most things. But then you can reduce it down. I'm only gonna go by one notch to two and press okay. And again, lovely and neat, nothing skipped. It's this line here and the seam is really secure. Now I know what you're thinking, that's all very well, Anna, but what about when you get to the end of your jeans? So you're trying to sew your hem and you're going over the side seam at the same time. So I've got the side seam here. Let's fold it over to make it bulkier. Let's just fold it over a couple of times a minute. There we go, as if you were doing your hem underneath. And there's, whoops, there's a little trick that I just wanna show you with this foot. And this is called the self-leveling. So let's make a start sewing a minute. And you can see when you get to that point, the foot is on an angle. It's coming up as if it's going up a ramp. So as it comes further forward and over the top, the front of the foot isn't actually on the fabric to keep it secure. And that's when the fabric starts moving, you get skip stitches and it all looks a bit of a mess. So instead, we're gonna level the foot so that it comes across the top of that now. And you do that by raising the presser foot lift it up and push the leveling button in and whilst you're holding it in drop the presser foot down and let go and you can see now how the foot is laying straight and that's going to come over the top and once we get over this bump it will just go back to its usual way did you see you might not saw because my hand was there but as it come over the bump that popped out and it's gone back to its normal position and the end result then is a nice neat hem there. There's no skip stitches, there's no messiness on either side. So this machine comes with three year warranty and when it arrives, you'll find this card in the box that explains all that to you and how to register the machine with Brother. And don't forget, we're here at the sewing studio as well for any support or advice you might need. You know, all sewing machines are similar, but they're all slightly different as well. So if you need a hand to get in to know your new one, just give us a shout. We're always happy to help. Thanks ever so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.